Welcome to Creative Pages with Catherine. I'm Catherine, and it's time for something a little bit different. On March 17th, I answered a viewer's question on how to cut some diamonds with purpose so that way you could reuse the scraps. And it's taken me a little bit to get back to it, but I'm going to give you an idea of how to use some of the scraps from cutting those diamonds with our What a Zoo 2 collection. So let me explain once I get everything switched over. When I answered that question, I showed you all how to cut these diamonds from the giraffe paper in our What a Zoo 2 collection. It's the paper that has the footprints on the back. And this is that sheet that I cut and took me a little bit to figure out how I wanted to actually use it. We're going to use it on the right side of our page of a two page layout here. And I'm going to layer it with our hot fudge cardstock because I also have another sheet of the giraffe paper that has the footprints on the back to use as a base for my left side. And I also had this <laughs> as well from our hot fudge cardstock from cutting another layout. So let's go ahead and layer this one on first. We're going to get some strategic tape runner going here. And I think this one might have been from doing some of my tulips possibly. I've had a lot of diamonds this year somehow, and so I've had a lot of diamond scraps. So you just, I don't know, if you have these diamonds, at least this will give you an idea. And you can do this pretty much with any collection. You just will need to layer with the correct color palette and papers overall. And by bringing back in the hot fudge and the giraffe on the right side, it does help to reinforce the color palette, reinforce some of the patterns, and just make things a little bit more cohesive, even though we're working with all of these diamond cutouts, negative spaces as well. Okay, so these are two I cut from the other side of the page, giraffe, footprints. So it works out perfectly. We are going to actually layer these two in here to create another space through the middle of our page with some diamonds, but it also is a different size. And so it gives your eye a, something different, a different dimension to look at as well. And we're going to go ahead and let this flow through the middle of this diamond here. So I'm kind of lining up as I'm going over and also lining through the middle here. And I am eyeballing it. You can pull out your zero centering ruler. I know I've done that for other videos as well. I This one I'm gonna eyeball. So just to show you guys, you can do it both ways. They're your pages. And you know what, some of those natural human imperfections are okay if it's not exactly to the exact measurement. I pulled out some mats as well from our mat pack. And look at that, these have footprints. It's kind of a, a lighter coffee color to both of these mats. Backside of one is a mustard colored stripe and the other one is a tan with a zebra-ish pattern. <laughs> it's been so long since I introduced the collection. I don't remember what all the names were exactly, so it kind of is what it is. All right, we are going to put this one at the top through the center as well. Here. About a quarter inch down and you know, reasonably centered through. You can see it's kind of almost running through the center of my diamonds, not quite on either one of them. There we go. And then the same at the bottom, because this is where our photos are going to go on our page. 
about a quarter of an inch up. Oops, from the bottom of the page. I knocked that one just a little bit. Fix that here. Here we go. And then we do have our layered embellishments. And I found these multicolored hearts. And I thought this is perfect for this side of the page. It has the giraffe print heart popped up. Look at that. You can ask for a better embellishment for our pages. And this just, like I said, it just works. Sometimes when it comes together, it just really comes together. So now, where are you going to put your photos? Where are you going to journal on the left side of the page? Okay, photo can go on the mats. If you want, you can put a smaller photo here. You can journal here. You can journal on your footprints if you want. Or you can also add a couple of horizontal photos through here as well. And then I would definitely put a 4 by 6 photo up at the top to kind of anchor your page. I hope that helps you all. Left side is done. Look at that. It did come together, didn't it? Now, right side of the page with our draft print up and all those, all those hex or diamond shapes cut out. One of the things I've done, I've pre-stuck down three of them. I'm centering four of these diamonds with a larger and a smaller. So the smaller ones came out from the left side of that layout, the left side that I just put together with the hot fudge cardstock. That's what these are from. And then this is from this one here, just flipped over to show the footprint side up versus not, versus the draft side, which is what's gonna be our base. And we're just gonna layer these two and center them. We now have four of these ready to go. These are going to go in our four corners. But first, I want to go ahead and stick this down onto our page, flip it over. Again, a little more strategic with our tape runner here. Because there's really only certain points that you can put it in. Here's one we can go right in the middle. And, oops. Here we go. Don't know. Sometimes those things just happen where things get tucked under and you don't realize. And there we set. I think I've got it all. Okay, and I do want my diamonds to be running more horizontal. Not that it matters because we could just turn the page. Let's get that lined up on our cardstock nicely here. Sometimes you need to use a little gravity, just like we do with our cards. There we go. Whoops, nope. There we go. Okay. Yep, that one definitely needed the gravity's help a little bit, and we're going to turn this this way. I'm going to grab my four diamonds first, get some tape runner on all four of those, because we're going to fill back in these spaces. Oops. Okay, here we go. So there's that one. And it literally just pops right in because it's the right, correct size of what we cut out of this paper. Just going back into place here. And then, of course, we still have the four in the center, but that's okay because we're, again, we're drawing back in the, the, the color palette, the patterns, the hot fudge, and it's all good. Now, I found this really cute giraffe or a giraffe <laughs> there's a giraffe on the back <laughs> but this is an elephant my name is Catherine <laughs> and you know it's okay here we go there's an elephant here that's going to go towards the bottom of our page here 
And I just loved, again, that it matched our patterns, it matched our colors. Our designers are so thoughtful. I just so appreciate them. And then I have two other mats that have the giraffe print on them. And the back side, so the back side of this one does match our 4x6 mat. It's that really dark speckled look. And this one is more of a gray tone diagonal line. Flip everything over. There's that giraffe. <laughs> and palm trees. I don't know. My trop I have a tropic time one with palm trees. I don't know if it's out yet or not. I filmed it. Maybe it's out. I'll just have to. I don't know what order these things are coming out sometimes, but I'm filming several videos for while I am moving and I've just got to figure out a release schedule here coming up, but maybe you've seen the Tropic Time one with the palm trees and maybe you haven't. If you haven't, it'll give you something to look forward to because that one was kind of fun. But right now we've got our zoo one with our elephant. That's also kind of fun. Let's see here. And there we go. So how's about that for working with a really busy pattern page something that you might have thought to just trash otherwise you know it's coming together and it's going to be a really nice layout we also have animal kingdom look at that in our layered embellishments and that's going to go whoops right down here if i can hold on to it in this diamond What do you think? This is the right side of our page. You can journal here if you wish. Picture here, picture here is what I would definitely suggest. You easily could squeeze a picture right here if you want, kind of before you get to your elephant, kind of cutting off part of your your box here but you do have space it's going to cover up part of your other part of your diamond but you can squeeze in one more photo if you want you can put a small one you can cut it out with the diamond up here if you want there's options I like options I'm going to be talking more about options also maybe my options are already out as well I'm <laughs> getting a little stressed out with the move coming so Sorry, right. the ship will write itself on the other end in Pennsylvania and it'll all be good. But in the meantime, at least you'll have some fun content to watch with Catherine a little bit stressed out getting ready for the move here. Here is my two page layout using up those scraps and diamonds. What do you all think? I love this one. I don't know. It just really came together as I started putting it together and made a lot of sense now that it's done. I think it would look beautiful in anyone's book. And we have a card. Guess what? It's also going to have diamonds. My card is ready to go. I pulled out a blank card from our blank card kit. Always double check to make sure it's the direction that somebody will be opening it. And in our What a Zoo 2 collection, we have some navy and white striped paper. The back side is one that has some greenery. And I think it's like with the one where the greenery was more in the corner with some other pattern shapes in the background. Honestly, it was a scrap in my stash. These are two and a half. I'm sorry, these are two and a quarter inches wide, and honestly, you could make it five and a half long because we're going to run it through our card. I'm going to grab out my zero centering ruler. So we're going to line our card up at two and an eighth because it's a four and a quarter card. There we go. Okay. 
And then we have our two and a quarter pieces here. So what does that mean? One and an eighth, right? Roughly close to it. Yeah, it looks like I'm just a little bit inside the one and an eighth here to run this through the center of my card. I'm going to do the same thing on, I'm just going to, you know what? I'm just going to eyeball it the rest of the way. What can I say? Just line things up. Mine are going to overlap just a little bit because I have the two pieces I am piecing together here. And it looks like actually one of my, the middle part of that other piece was just ever so slightly, ever so slightly off at the top there, but that's okay. Because it's not going to matter because we're going to cover up the center seam. So if you have two scraps that are two and a quarter inches, you can just piece them together like this. And we are going to use up some of these diamonds that we cut. Again, we are going to run these through our card. So I have two of my print with the giraffe and the footprints. We're going to have the paw print up on the bottom one. And we'll have the draft print up on the top. And then I also have that last fifth diamond, the hot fudge diamond that's the smaller size that's going to go through the middle here. So we're going to layer this one on just through the center of our card and eyeball it as best as you can. It's okay if it's a little bit off, honestly. It's a card. Somebody's going to appreciate getting a homemade card. But I did kind of want to have the center centered on that one. Next, we're going to run this one through diagonally. So angling from the bottom left corner to the top right corner is where our longer points on this slightly smaller diamond are going here and then we have the other larger diamond with the giraffe print that's going to be up going the other direction here and creating our own little shape here how fun is that it's another good fun way to use up your diamonds and it doesn't matter which collection you have. But I also found this really cute layered embellishment that I could not resist putting on through this card. Gonna add a little bit of tape under here. I guess I could have used my repositionable one. It might've made my life a little bit easier, but that's okay. We're gonna use the regular tape runner. And just because our base is the paw prints, I thought, you know what? Could not resist and in fact i might oh i don't know if i'm gonna pull out my ruler we can pull out the ruler but like i just said a second ago it is a homemade card that looks pretty good going through there these things are not exactly linear they're a little bit offset and the popped up every single other one of them what do you think I would love to hear your thoughts on how I used up these diamonds. We're not following a sketch on this one. This is just Catherine playing around freestyling a bit and coming up with a layout and a card to help you all use up some of your scraps from my other viewer question. And I love it when you all have questions for me. So if anybody has a question, don't be shy about leaving them in the comments of any of my videos for me. If there's something I don't explain as well, or if I am just freestyling and there's just a little something that you just don't get, I am happy to re-explain it. Or even if it means I need to film a short, or can't type it out. I'm perfectly happy to do that for you all. Okay, that is it. Until next time.